greetings from the Kenyan teacher once again. Today we have the pleasure of presenting a short video. This is going to act as a clarification on instances where the access is supposed to be broken when we are drawing graphs in chemistry. So welcome and be with us till the end. We want to use a sample question that had tested the skill of graph drawing in chemistry paper two. So a lot of emphasis is going to be laid on the table. So for table one, we have volume of sodium hydroxide and temperature of the mixture. You are supposed to plot a graph of a temperature against volume of sodium hydroxide. So how are we supposed to draw the graph correctly? And how are we supposed to break the y-axis correctly? Remember, the x-axis is not supposed to be broken because it starts at a zero. When your values start at zero, you do not have to break your graph. But look at temperature, which was supposed to be plotted along the y-axis. The least value we have here is 25. So if you have to start the axis at zero, your graph is going to be a hanging graph. And this forces us now to break the axis. So in this video, I present three techniques that you can use in chemistry to avoid what we call a hanging curve or a hanging graph. So our values that I want to use are actually the first ones. These ones we shall ignore because they are not very important. So for x-axis, it starts at a zero. We do not have to break the axis. But at y, on the y-axis, the value starts at 25. So we do or we are forced to break the axis. Now how do we do it correctly to earn the full marks for uh, scale? So I want to present several versions as I explain what should be done. So the first version of the graph is what is here. A student has decided to plot zero on the x-axis and two squares to represent 10 cubic centimeter. He goes ahead to plot all the way to 60 as dictated by the graph. So this is good enough. Coming to y, this student decides to break the axis. He breaks only part of the first square. The zigzag lines are ending halfway. So this in chemistry is wrong. We are not going to give him the half a mark for scale along the y-axis. Because the question we are going to ask is, how do you take care of this part that has been left out of the zigzag line? So, students, when you are breaking the axis in chemistry, we are going to deny you marks if you break only part of the square, like what this student has done here. And I believe our argument convinces you as to why we deny that mark. The, reason, the reasoning is you have only uh, broken the axis up to half the square. How then do we take care of the remaining small squares between your broken axis and where your first value starts? So if you did this for scale, we shall only give you a half for the x-axis, but zero for the y-axis. So you end up losing half a mark, 
instead of getting the full one mark for the scale. So this is the first uh, sample that I have. Let us have a look at other samples and we have agreed that this first sample is not allowable in chemistry, especially for the y-axis. So let us look at the other samples and discuss whether they are allowed or not. So here is my sample 2. Using the same data in the table, you find a student that has done the same thing for the x-axis and then for the y-axis, the first figure that started, the least figure that we had for temperature was 25 and he decides to put that at the origin. This is allowed. Then, as you draw your graph, the line is going to pass through the origin. Because when volume of sodium hydroxide is zero, temperature is 25. So this is where your first plot is going to be. So when you do it this way, where you put the first figures from the table at the origin, both of them at the origin, this is something that is allowable in chemistry. So this student is going to get the full marks for scale. A half for the X and a half for the Y. The next sample is with us here. Suppose a student decides to break the axis as indicated here and he breaks the whole square, the whole square. So anything between zero and 25 has been taken care of by the zigzag lines. This again is now correct. And therefore, such a student gets the full marks for the scale. So you can see here, in chemistry, if you have decided to break the axis, please break the whole square. Don't stop midway. Well, understood. The last sample is a student who decides that I don't want my graph to pass through the origin. So my least figure from the table is 25, but let me start at 23, something nearer my least figure. So at the origin, I put 23 and 0. This one is also acceptable because instead of your line passing through the origin, it will now pass through 25 here, going up. So this is also allowed and therefore the student gets the full marks for the scale. I want to thank you for being with us as we clarify on the issue of breaking of the axis in graphs in this subject called chemistry. Thank you.